Okay, now we're going to start working on our e-publication. It's going to include eight pages, one for each planet that was created earlier in Photoshop, and then a cover and an optional back cover. So we can think of our e-publication as a kind of informational book that will be viewed only on a computer screen. It's not meant for print. So if we look at some of the um, requirements, they reflect that fact. So we're going to be setting up the InDesign document using RGB color mode. We're going to be using uh, pixel dimensions, 612 by 792 and we do not need to have any bleeds included. We're also going to save this as a PDF file. So I'm going to show you how to begin setting it up using InDesign. So let's go ahead and open up InDesign. And let's just make sure that our preferences are set so that the units uh, of measure are set to pixels. So mine are. If yours aren't, then that's what you're going to want to do. Let's choose new. Let's uh, choose our intent. Uh, we're going to choose web. Let's make sure our orientation is portrait. And then for page size, we'll choose letter. When we choose letter page size, it will automatically give us the correct pixel dimensions. We can leave the margins as is, so 36 pixels equals uh, half an inch, and then we're not going to worry about the bleed or slug. All right, so. Um, Let's reset the essentials on our workspace. What we need right now is the pages window. All right, so let's make sure that we have the pages window available and that it's uh, a floating window so that it doesn't fold back up. Uh, we want to make sure that we're working with this window and we're always aware of what type of page that we're on. So there's a few things to notice in this pages window. We have a document page. So when we created our document, by default, we get a page one of our document. And it says page one, because it's the only page in our document, one of one. Notice that there's an A in our little page icon. And now this icon, this document page icon, corresponds to the page that we see in our um, in our window here. And we can see that we're on document page one because there's a one down left of our window. So the A says A master applied. So that means that this up here, this A master, is a template that whatever is placed on this template, it's going to automatically apply it to this document page one. So for example, if I was to double click a master, which is just, again, it's a master page is a, is a kind of a template, and this one just happens to be named A by default. When I double click that, I activated it. That means that now, even though it, the document that's appearing in our window looks exactly like it did before, it says A master down here. So that means that I'm going to be putting something on this master page. So if I just, uh, let's say, draw out a rectangle frame and I fill it with a color, oops. Uh, Okay, I fill it with a color. Notice how I work, I'm work. i working on the master page, A, and that little 
square appeared on this icon, but it also appeared on my document page. So if I double click the document page, um, again, I'm on page one here, I see that that black square is, is on the document page. So anything that I put on my master page is going to appear on the document page as long as my master page is applied to it. We have another master page up here that is just none. It, it doesn't have a name. And um, so this is fine. We're going to start working in our master page to set up some items on our multi-page document that recur on every page, such as a page number, uh, maybe a background color, some text frames with text in them, and we'll have these things on every single page and then we can go ahead and modify those later once we create all our pages. So we're going to end up putting our planet images in our layout and our planet images were set up with a eight and a half by eleven image size and that image size matches exactly the page size that we have in our e-document but for now while we're while we're putting some recurring elements on our pages let's just make a black background so I'm going to go ahead and make a black background that goes the entire length and width of my page. And again, I'm working on the master page, not on the document page. All right, we don't have to worry about bleeds for this. And for now, let's go ahead and lock this so that we don't accidentally select it and move it while we're placing other elements on our page. So let's select it and right click and choose lock. Okay, if we needed to make a change or remove it, we can always double click this little lock icon and then we can modify it again. But for now, again, let's do lock. All right. So we need a page number. So let's go and place our page number in the bottom margin of our document. So I'm just dragging out a text box in the approximate center of the document and I have my blinking cursor. Now instead of just typing a number in there, I'm going to use a special character. So I'm going to the type menu, going to insert special character, choose markers, and then choose current page number. And if I press command A, to highlight the character that was just inserted. Let's change that to white or paper color so that we can see it against our background. And I'll go ahead and center it. And let's just leave that alone for now. So you notice that the special character, it inserts a page number on our, uh, on whichever page we happen to be on. So since we're on the master page A, that's the one that's active, then the page number is going to be the letter A. If we go to our document page one, to which master page A is applied, then our page number automatically becomes one. So we want to make sure that we use the special character and don't type, ma don't manually type in a page number so that we don't, uh, as we create pages on our document, those page numbers will fall in in order automatically. And we could even rearrange the pages in our document if we wanted to, but the page no numbers would still be correct. Okay, so the next thing we can do is we can add, uh, go back to master page A, make sure that that's what you're on. And let's make another text frame. Let's drag that out. Uh, we have our blinking cursor. Let's go ahead and add some text, but instead of typing text, because this is an e-publication, we can think of it as kind of an informational um, document about the solar system. Maybe there's some scientific facts or something. Uh, and um, 
we're not going to write the copy ourselves. We would get that copy from someplace else. But we do need to have some text in there that we can work with and we can design and we could show a client um, you know, our intention without actually having the copy, the real copy. So let's, with our blinking cursive active, cursor active inside of our text frame, let's go to type and choose fill with placeholder text. And now it doesn't look like much happened. Our cursor went from the upper corner to the lower corner, but that's just because we have black text by default and it's on a black background. So if I hit Command A and I change the color of my text to paper, now I have white text on a black background. And this doesn't look particularly nice. I mean, um, we're, we're going to do some typography here. And as typographers, which all designers are, all graphic designers are, we need to uh, make sure that our type is readable. As it is now, we've got line lengths that are, are just too long. And the letting, which is the space between our text, is not wide enough. So it makes it very, very hard to read. Uh, so let's make some changes. Let's make columns on our text frame. So right click on it and choose text frame options. And right now you can see that the number of columns is at one. For this layout, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and make a three column layout. And make sure the preview is checked. And if I hit tab, then I have my three column layout. Now the gutter is defined in InDesign, the gutter is defined as the space between the columns. So by default, it's 12 pixels. If we were to make changes here, we if we increase the number of pixels, the space is getting wider. And if we decrease the, the number, it's getting narrower. Um, 12 is, is probably OK for this publication, but you could go wider if you if you want. Uh, better to go wider than narrower. Okay, a um, few other things that we can do. We've got um, we've got what look like maybe uh, paragraphs in here, and it's we need to to define our paragraphs a little bit better. So let's go to type and tables in the in the window menu and bring out our our paragraph window and we've got some options here so let's uh, define our paragraphs by creating an indent so we can see that every time we click and increase the number of pixels we're making an indent we want to make sure that our indent is enough that it's easy to see the beginning of a of a paragraph but uh, not too much we want to make sure our paragraph indents are well defined so we we want to have something maybe at least around 18 pixels for uh, a column width like this we could probably go a little bit farther than that but we we don't want to go too far so maybe um, you know 18 to 22 pixels or somewhere around around there is good. Now another method of differentiating paragraphs is uh, a, a space before that we could put in there. So if we increase the number of pixels in our space before setting, you can see that now the par every time a new paragraph begins, we have a space. So the key with uh, setting paragraphs is that you don't want to do both. You want to choose one method of uh, differentiating your paragraphs, either an indent on the first line or a space between paragraphs, but again, not both because they indicate the same thing. They indicate the start of a new paragraph. And if you put both on there, that's a visual redundancy. So I'm going to go ahead and use the indent because that's maybe a little bit more common for body text like this. But it's up to you whether you'd like to use the indent or the 
spacing. Okay, so another thing that we could do to make, um, oh, there's a, a couple things here. So just that default text that came in, this is called placeholder text in InDesign, but another name for it is dummy text because it looks like real text, but obviously it's nonsense. We need to do a, a bit more to make our body text look a bit more readable and professional and refined. Uh, so we we made our columns, we um, gave our paragraphs an indent on the first line. Maybe we can do a hard return and make another paragraph. If you don't have enough paragraphs, maybe you want to want to do that. And on the first paragraph, rather than having a um, an indent, let's have an initial cap or a drop cap. What that means is that's the first letter of your story, or of your body text, is going to be larger than the others. And it's a way to it's a visual indication that this is where the text starts and it draws the reader's eye and it usually it it, it looks interesting it, it's it invites the reader to start reading at that point so um, the setting here is how many lines of text do you want this drop cap or an initial cap to extend so I have this set at two we could try three and it goes three lines and it gets larger proportionally. So I think maybe, you know, three is probably okay. Um, we also have to think about our text size. So for body text on a page this size, which is a standard letter size page, 12 is fairly large. Um, it, 12 is acceptable, but maybe 11 or 10, but it depends on your font. So I have this default Minion Pro font, and I probably am going to try something a little bit different. So um, I think this looks pretty good, but the the letting or the spacing between the lines is a little bit too narrow so what it what happens is that my eye starts to want to go down to the next line before reading the current line and it just hurts the readability a bit so let's make an adjustment let's bring out uh, from our windows menu we can bring out our character window and let's uh, let's take a look at the the letting, and actually we did we do have uh, an option to change the letting in our options menu, but it's the same thing in the character window. So if you notice, you have you have the same settings in this option menu as you do in the character window, and also the paragraph settings. You can choose between. Um, you can click on character to bring up your character settings or paragraph to bring up your paragraph settings. Alternatively, you can use these little floating windows with the same options. The advantage of the floating window is that you can position it right near where you're working and so you don't have to move your mouse a lot and it saves your, you know, a little bit of stress on your wrist. So if we if we look at our letting option, you'll see that it says 12 point and there's a parentheses around that. The parentheses means that that is the default letting that Adobe InDesign has decided looks good for 10 point type. So whenever I see the, par the parentheses here on the letting, I know that the designer who designed the page and who set the type didn't change the letting. So you need to make sure that you change the letting or you, you experiment with the letting to see what 
will be the most readable. So maybe 10 uh, point type with a 13 point letting looks better. Let's try 14. I think that's even better. So we need to have space between our lines of text to make it more, make it more readable. I think I'm going to go even wider. I'm going to go 15. And you've got a drop down menu here with some presets. Um, we'll try 18, the preset. That's that's maybe that's too much. I don't know. It just depends on the look that you're going for. I actually kind of like this because we're thinking about this. It's about planets and space, and it's going to have a background that looks like space a little bit. So um, maybe I'll maybe I'll oops. Maybe I'll leave that alone. Now, if you have, um, if you end up with this little box here on your text frame that looks like it's got a little X inside, that means that's the uh, indicating that you have an overset. You've got more type or text inside of your text frame than it can fit. So there's extra type going over. Uh, going outside of your text frame. So let's go ahead and just um, take a look at that. We'll select some text and delete. And I see I deleted enough and now it all fits. All right, we can resize our text box also. So if we click and drag, uh, we can resize this so that all the the text aligns at the bottom. And this is just dummy text, so we can do some editing here to make our text fit without worrying about, um, you know, somebody actually having to read this and it not making any sense. Okay, so now that we have some columns of text. We've styled our text a little bit. We've got a drop cap. We've got our page number. We've got an indication of a background. We can start adding some elements to our to our pages that uh, can give it a little bit more interest. So maybe we want to add a ruled line to um, help to give our page some structure. So I click, clicked on the line tool and if I click and drag, if I hold shift it'll lock it to a horizontal um, alignment and if I change the color to paper and let's change the, th the weight, make it a bit thicker We've got some options, so we have a stroke window that we can open up and we can, again, same options, some of the same options that are up in your options menu, but uh, in the stroke window we've got some other options like the type of stroke. So can we make a double line or can we make a dotted line or um, I like this wavy line for I don't know, just thinking about, um, again, space and, you know, light waves or radiation waves or something like that is pretty cool. So, you know, that's something that you can experiment with. And once I have a rule line, I can, I can copy and paste. And maybe I want to place these someplace else. Again, just to give my page some structure and some interest, define the different areas or offset different areas of my page. Another thing I might do is add some skinny rules between, uh, between our columns of text. So this is a way to just help to visually divide one column from another so the eye, you know the reader's eye doesn't want to skip over to the next column and if we do if you do decide to place these in the gutter 
and divide the columns uh, as, as, a, as a visual division for your columns and make sure that you put them right in the center, that you're real precise with it, that they're, they're skinny. They really probably should be no more than about a half, a half a point. I put mine at a quarter of a point because you don't want them to be um, the first thing that a reader notices. In fact, if, if you do it correctly, the reader probably won't even be aware that, uh, of, of these rules there at all. And um, we could go to screen mode and choose preview and take a look at what we've got so far. All right, so we've got some structure on our page. All right, and then again, we're still working on our master page. So um, we might have some repeating elements that help to um, um, orient the reader inside of this publication. So there's going to be eight pages, uh, eight content pages, one for each planet. And um, it might be a good idea to put some sort of a, a, a visual graphic that shows where the planets are in this solar system, this fictional solar system that you're going to be creating. So, um, you know, these say first planet, sixth planet, sixth planet is on page six, first planet is, is on page one. Um, I've got a little graphic indication of the planets in the solar system, their relative sizes, and their relative positions next to each other. And so since this is the first planet, then I have an indication that the first planet is right here and it's that size because I've filled that in with a white fill and all the others have a fill of none. And the sixth planet has a ring and I indicate the ring here and I show again where the sixth planet is located in its relative size relative to the other planets by by filling that in. So that's something like that is a nice feature. So in order to create something like that in InDesign, um, the way that I created my uh, little visual graphic is I just used the ellipse frame tool and I did all this within InDesign and I clicked and dragged out a circle. I held shift in order to make my circle uh, or my ellipse perfectly round. I put a white or paper colored stroke on that. I left the fill at none. Copied and pasted. Placed another one. Shift option to resize from a center, the center point. Whoops. You could create a, a duplicate by by clicking uh, and holding shift option and then shift option again which will uh, allow you to resize it shift option shift option again and drag to resize all right so you can you can uh, go ahead and create your own custom solar system, show the relative sizes of your planets and their locations. All right, if you wanna make a ring or indicate a ring, then just uh, use the, the line tool, click and drag. You can use the arrow keys to nudge your uh, graphic elements into position so that goes with the for the planets too if I use my arrow keys I can move them around all right one two three four five one two three four five I need eight planets in total you want to vary them up a bit. All 
All right. I'm doing this fairly quickly, but when you are working on this, you should take a little bit more time and refine it and, you know, try to make it look, um, try to make it fit your, your own concept for what your solar system should be like. You know, how many gas planets do you have? The gas planets tend to be bigger than the rocky planets, so um, make sure that all your gas planets are larger than your rocky planets. All right, and then also in the example, I say I label the planet. Is it the first planet, the second planet, the third planet? So go ahead and create a new text box. Um, we can just put first planet, or we could actually, we could, let's change this to um, the paper color so that we can see it. First planet. Or we could just put, because this is on our master page, we're going to be changing this on each individual page. We could, we could say uh, uh, number planet, because we're going to customize this. Change it to the correct font. Style it the way that you want. To size this, you can um, you can you can click and drag, hold the shift key. Whoops, hold shift uh, command to size your text frame and your text together. If you just hold shift, you're going to size the text frame, and what you really want to do is size the the type or the text and the frame at the same time so you're going to spend some time styling this the way you would like um, let's make this ultra light or light let's see that's ultra light Maybe these planets, uh, maybe they're skinnier too. Just depends on the look that you're going for. All right. Of course, if you have a different concept than this, then, then feel free to experiment. This is just, a, just an idea to get you started. So make sure you save your document, save as, um, give it a name, make sure you create your assignment folder. So we'll use our naming convention, um, your last name, BCD1015 underscore 07, because this is assignment seven if, this, if you're in the eight week class. And we'll call this document under uh, last name underscore uh, eight planets underscore epub. <laughs>